so. A couple of announcements I want to share with you all today, if we could uh, look to that to begin in our, our time of worship together. Uh, first of all, we've got the accountable leadership meeting tomorrow night. Uh, anybody who serves on our accountable leadership board, you uh, uh, should have received an email with the link to do that for Zoom uh, tomorrow evening on Monday. Uh, go Choir Practice is on Tuesday, and then we have Truck or Treat coming up this Saturday night. Everybody say, yay, candy! Yay. All right. So um, one of the things with Truck or Treat that I wanted to share with you is uh, we're going to be having all of the trunks outside on the parking lot here at the corner of 4th and Madison at the church. It'll be a completely outdoor event, and so uh, be prepared for that. But it looks like, according to the weather forecast, we're going to have beautiful weather. The thing I need for you to do is to let us know if you're planning on coming and having a trunk at the church so that we can plan our spaces because we're going to have the kids stay in the cars with their parents and drive through. It's going to be a drive-through trunk or treat, and we're trying to make sure we've got a plan so that we can uh, get everybody navigated through correctly. So if you'll just uh, give us a call or send a text or an email and let us know that you're going to have a trunk or trunk or treat, that would be absolutely awesome. Also, we're taking donations of candy to the church uh, to give out a trunk or treat, and uh, that's pretty cool too. The other thing I wanted to mention to you is that uh, Charge Conference is on Sunday, November 8th. It's going to be a virtual Charge Conference this year. I've been telling everyone it's going to be at 3 o'clock. I found out the other day it might not be. The district office is still trying to figure out how to navigate the uh, online virtual charge conference piece. But if you are interested in being a part of that virtual meeting, you're more than welcome to attend. Just let me know so I can make sure and get you the information as we get that information. Also today, we are going to be having a time where you can turn your pledge cards in for your annual commitment to your financial giving to God through this church. If you've not brought that with you, those of you who received one in the mail, we've got some extra ones at the entrances where the ushers have been. So we'll have that during the offering time that they'll actually be placed in the offering plate rather than in a box up front. That way you all can stay seated. I think that's pretty much everything that I needed to announce right now that would be church business. Now I'm going to talk stomach or belly business. There are still apple pies available for sale from the United Methodist Women. And beginning not tomorrow, but hopefully in November, correct Barbara? They're going to start making pecan pies. I say that, and I'm glad I have a mask on because it's catching the drool coming from my mouth. They're so good. So if you're interested in those, be sure and call and reserve one for you. That's all the belly business because it's not quite lunchtime yet, so let's focus ourselves upon God and not our bellies and begin this time of worship.
Please stand for the call to worship. Every generous act of giving is a tribute to God's love for us. Lord, let us be people who generous and loving gifts for others. Be ready to listen and slow to react in anger. Lord, prepare us to be peaceful people. Keep your hearts and spirits ready to serve the Lord. Please be seated. Let us join in an attitude of prayer. Dearest Lord, we are grateful for this time to be together. We ask humbly, Lord, that you would guide our thoughts, that you would fill us with a little bit of stillness. It has been a chaotic week. We seem to build in our chaos. And so in these moments, fill us with quiet. You, Almighty God, know the prayers of our hearts. You know the things that have unsettled us this past week. You know the things that have broken our hearts. And you have been with us. You are with us in the heartbreak. You are with us in the joy. Help us to remember you are with us in all things. Your generosity of who you are is ever around us. Things clamor to take us away from you. Help us to stay focused. Help us to stay centered. Help us to remember that everything we do reveals our relationship with you. Every single thing. And masks or no masks, you know our hearts. Sometimes the face gives us away, so the masks are interesting. Word, the heart, the heart that sometimes we let get a little hardened. Sometimes we let it even get arrogant. Forgive us. Fill us with your purpose of honoring you in all ways, in all times, in all things. We acknowledge, God, that everything we have comes from you. There are times we live like we forget. But this moment, today, we're lifting it up that every single thing we have comes from you and a blessing.
Somebody's down to their last time Somebody's running out of
compassion that they need you for the day. Amen? Amen. Amen. Um, our scripture reading for today is from 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, verses 1 through 15. Now it is not necessary for me to write you about the ministry to the saints, for I know your eagerness, which is the subject of my boasting about you to the people of Macedonia, saying that Achaia has been ready since last year, and your zeal has stirred up most of them. But I am saying to brothers, in order that our boasting about you may not prove to have been empty in this case, so that you may be ready, as I said you would be. Otherwise, if some Macedonians come with me and find that you are not ready, we would be humiliated to say nothing of you in this undertaking. So I thought it necessary to urge the brothers to go on ahead of you, to, excuse me, go ahead to you and arrange in advance for this bountiful gift that you have promised, so that it may be ready as a voluntary gift and not as an extortion. The point is this. The one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. I love this part. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ and by the generosity of your sharing with them and with all others. While they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. The words of God for the people of God. Amen. This morning we are going to be wrapping up a sermon series that we've been going through this entire month. It's the stuff that the church does. And as we begin to wrap this up today, I want to remind you of a couple of things that we've talked about this past month. First of all, we discussed the fact that you and I and all others who follow God through Jesus Christ are the church. We are the church. The church is not this building. You and I, we are the church. Amen? Remember the little thing we used to say when we were younger? Remember that little, here's the church, here's the steeple, open the door, there's all the people? That was wrong. Open the doors, there's all the church. Okay? Doesn't rhyme though, so we can't do that, right? The second thing we talked about during this last month is that the church is not something that we attend only one hour on Sunday mornings. If we're going to be the church, we're called to be the church 24-7, no matter what. Now, worship, of course, is a big part of who we are as followers of God. And we yearn for worship, but that isn't all. So let's not limit our faith to saying that church is a building or that church is one hour on Sunday mornings. Are you with me so far? The third thing is, is that the church, you and I, we're on a journey together. And this journey of faith is something that we are living day to day. Every moment we have choices to make that help us to decide how we're going to live this journey out. We're blessed with being able to live it out together because the journey is meant to be taken together. It's not a solo mission. It's something that we do as a group as the church, right? So as we read our scriptures and we grow in faith through prayer and as we're part of fellowship and small groups and 
we grow in our understanding of God through worship and Bible study, we become more and more of the church that God calls us to be in ways that creates a journey that is so blessed with its ups and downs, with its mountains and valleys. We're so blessed to be able to be on that journey together. Those are some of the things that we've been talking about this last month when we're talking about what it means to be the church and what the church does. Now today, we're going to talk about how we give as a part of our journey of faith. Now right out of the gate, I want to clear something up with everybody. Serving, studying your scripture, praying, being a part of a small group, coming to worship, all those things are giving, right? They're giving of who you are to God. Turning your life, turning yourself over to God. And I want to make sure that you realize this, that you're already giving by showing up and being a part of that group that's on this journey together. Giving financially is another step in that same journey. Giving yourself for sure, it is a wonderful thing, but giving financially is probably a bigger step than so many areas in our life than what we really consider. Sometimes giving our financial resources to God is just one more way to give ourselves to God, but it's also another step in our faith journey. Here's a fact of life, church. Money matters. It does. We can't pretend that it doesn't. Televangelists have made this abused word of prosperity. They've long abused it. But it's still true that God desires for us to have success, to prosper. Now, I'm passionately convinced that God wants every person to be prosperous, but there's a catch. There's become a vast difference between what our world defines as prosperous and what the Bible describes as prosperous. This worldly definition of prosperity is tied up in the thought that the person who has the most toys wins. You've heard that statement before, haven't you? I bet you've even said it a few times yourself. This idea of worldly prosperity is tied up in the fact that we, we want to make our lives look good from the outside. But that's not the biblical definition of prosperity. The biblical definition of prosperity has to do with faith, hope, and love. The biblical definition of prosperity has to do with values and morals. Anybody ever seen the t-shirt that says, live your life so the preacher doesn't have to lie at your funeral? <laughs> you ever seen that? You know, the biblical definition of prosperity has to do with faith and hope and love. Prospering in those things. Scripture tells us that when we are blessed by God with faith, hope, and love, that God blesses us in all areas of our lives. And sometimes that has to do with financial resources. And Scripture tells us that with great wealth comes great responsibility. And God is who will provide for our needs. Sure, we play a part in providing for our financial needs, but God has a major role in it. I want you to pay attention here, church. God provides for our needs, not our wants. God wants us to live a prosperous life by biblical definition. So how can we do that? Seems like we're bombarded every day with all these images and stories of success that's defined by worldly terms. Don't you agree? How do you live biblically when it comes to money and wealth? Well, today's scripture speaks to this very clearly. It speaks to our Christian responsibility to care for the needs of the saints. To share your prosperity with others who cannot supply their own needs. And to do so happily. As David sang in the song, there is someone very close to here who has these needs. How do we provide for those needs? You know, God blesses us with prosperity, not only to supply the needs that we have and the needs
things that others have, but he does so in a way that we are called to glorify God in being able to do those things. We're not called to break our arms patting ourselves on the back at all, not to grumble either in a sort of way that makes you, you know, seem like that you're being a saint yourself for giving. The scripture reminds us that God wants you to give because you desire so, and it fulfills your faith, your hope, and your love to do so cheerfully. God doesn't want your guilt money, church. God wants you to give because you desire to give and because you're cheerful in doing so. God wants you to give because you understand that that is one more step in your journey of giving all of yourself over to God. So church, you have to decide how you're going to define prosperity. And you need to decide whether you choose to give and live biblically. This is a wonderful gift from God given to you. Just as the gift to follow God is your choice, how you look at these things in your life, they're all your choice. God doesn't force these things upon you. God calls you to reconcile those things between you and the Holy Spirit yourself. So today's scripture touches on another way that we can live biblically and how our giving is really important. It says make a commitment to give and stick with it. If you promise to give, do it. Otherwise, don't promise. And today's the day in the church year that the church leadership asks for you who are regular members and participants here at the church to fill out your financial commitment cards, your financial pledge cards. Many of you received these in the mail, and you might have brought them with you the last couple of Sundays. If you've not received them or you forgot it at home like I did, yes, the preacher forgets things, okay? They've got, we've got some available at each of the entrances. The ushers would be happy to bring you one if you need it here in a moment when I want to give you some time to fill it out. But today is the day that we do this because it's important for us to take next steps in our journey. And you'll notice on the financial commitment card, the pledge card, that we even offer a spot there where you can check off. I'm taking the next step in my journey. I want to share something with you about steps. When my husband Vince and I first became a part of a worshiping faith community, the first Sunday that we attended church was the Sunday that, like today, where they were talking about financial commitment and pledge cards. So as two people who didn't attend church regularly as young folks, I went with my granny when she'd stop in her big old Ford LTD and pick me up on the way. But as people who didn't grow up in the church to understand all of the functions of the church, the ministries of the church, the mission work of the church, we walked into a church for our first time as a couple to worship, to hear, plan how you're going to give money to the church. And one of the reasons we were in church that day is because we've been fighting in our marriage about money. Wow. Number one, did God not know where to send us on that first time we went to church together? Number two, we kind of stepped back and thought, well, isn't there more to church than just money? Come on. It can hit you the wrong way sometimes, can't it, folks? It can hit you in a way that you go, man, all they talk about is how to pay bills and do this and do that. and to, They want money for this. Man, they're even selling pumpkins to get our money, right? <laughs> it took my husband and I a little while to figure out that money matters in all areas of life, even in your faith journey. There are stories written about the early days of Christianity where folks were coming by the thousands to be baptized and to be new followers of God through Jesus Christ. And they would come, specifically the Roman soldiers this was written about, and they'd walk into the waters to be baptized except they would take their purse, yes guys, you carried purses back then, 
They'd take their purse and they'd hold it above the water while they were being baptized. Not because they were worried their purse would get ruined by being wet, but because they were willing to give themselves to God in all areas except their finances. I want you to let that sink in. Because that's the situation my husband and I found ourselves in many years ago. We were happy to give ourselves over to God, except when it came to our finances, we wanted to fight about that. It took us a while to figure out what that meant to turn everything over to God and to trust God. But once we did, it worked out really well. And there have been times that we have filled out commitment cards and we've not been able to honor our commitment. Things like that happen. We've even had a bump on the road this year where that's happened, where I've had to a couple months cut back on what we gave to the church and I plan to make it up by the end of the year. Those things happen in lives. But here's the thing. You've got to be willing to trust God to lead you in the directions that your gifts and graces he's blessed you with will help you to lead. Because this thing called our faith journey isn't just about me, it's not just about you, it's about us. It's about the folks that David sang about. It's about the folks who need our help. So, today, I and the leaders of First United Methodist Church are honored that you choose to give your financial resources back to God through this church so that mission and ministry can be accomplished in this community and abroad. And I want you to know, I don't get up here to talk about money and tell you how much to give just because I want to or because we're trying to meet a budget. I do it because it's my responsibility as a faithful Christian leader who follows God to get up here and talk about money because it's biblical. If I'm going to teach the Bible, I've got to teach it all. So these commitment cards, yes, they're about money, but they're about so much more. They're about how you choose to return to God that which God has blessed you with. And the commitment cards are about making a choice to, to live biblically and to define prosperity in God's definition of prosperity and to resist the temptation of worldly definitions of prosperity. So it's about money. Let's be clear about that. But it's also about taking a step in your faith journey. So this morning, I want to give you a few minutes to think about that understanding of financial giving. Because here's the truth, church. Every one of us has a story, just like the one I've shared with you about Vince and I. And we have a story about how we come to our conclusions about money and wealth and God and how we share those things with God. We all have a story because it's a part of our faith journey. It's about you and your family and the decisions you make in defining prosperity. So today what I want you to do is to take a moment, have some quiet time to think about it, pray about it. If you haven't already, fill out your pledge card. If you need one, please raise your hand. We'll have one of the ushers bring it to you. And then we're going to take a few moments to offer a prayer before we take our offering today so that you can place your morning offering and your commitment card into the plate at the same time. Ladies, would you play a little bit of music for us? Just pick something lovely. You've already played several lovely pieces already.
Gracious God, I give you thanks for the many amazing ways that you show us these gifts and graces that you so freely give to us. I give you thanks, God, for the ways that you remind us of whose we are and how we are called to be. And I ask, God, that as we each take steps in our faith in so many different ways through a commitment to read scripture, a commitment to pray more, a commitment to be in missions and ministry through this church so that they serve you. I ask God that you bless this time in the ways that you bless all the other commitments we make. God, bring your Holy Spirit down upon us here and help us to, with a cheerful heart, make a choice on how our lives will serve you. It's in your Son's most precious and holy name, all God's people say, Amen. So now at this time, if the ushers will come forward with the, um, this morning's offering, we'll collect that along with the commitment cards. And for those who are worshiping with us online, if you are uh, needing a commitment card, if one's not been given to you or mailed it out to you, please let us know at the church. We'll be happy to send one to you electronically. And in our time of receiving our offering, I remind our folks online that we have our online giving button, or you can mail your offering in to P.O. Box 470. Father God, we give you thanks over and over and over again just for the gift of this beautiful life that you've blessed us with. And as we return these commitment cards, these offerings, as we, God, put ourselves before you in uncompromising ways, as we put ourselves before you unconditionally, we ask God for you to take us, to use us, to guide us, direct us, even push us when we seem to be too thick-headed to get it. Use us, God, for your purposes. Let the Spirit lead us. Let the Spirit lead this church. Let the Spirit lead our community, God, so that we may serve you in the most holy and righteous ways you deserve to be served. It's in your Son's most precious and holy name we all say together, Amen. If everyone would please stand, I'd like to offer a benediction as we wrap up our worship service today. Oh, goodness. How many of you did not wake up with your alarm clock today? How many of you woke up much later? How many of you woke up much earlier? Oh my gosh, there's more of that. When the time changes next weekend, you're going to be in a world of hurt. <laughs> How many of you woke up with God today? Amen. May you go today with the presence of the very spirit of the living God in you and through you and from you and around you. May you go today with the very presence of the living God not only guiding you, but loving you every step of the way. Amen. Have a blessed week, you all.